G'day, Steve Morgan here. Australian Bass Tournaments and we have caught up with the winners of the first round of the Zarek Barra Tour. It was the second event of the Zarek Barra Series for this year. It was the Wilson's Kinchant Dam event, a famous lake that has got a lot of barra in a really small area. And we have interviewed these guys before, Team Humminbird, Edge Rods, Karim, Craig Griffiths. Guys, in a lake which is sort of like a bit of a lucky dip because the big ones can turn up anyway, you consistently win at this joint. I bet you it's the secret spot that you guys found this time. Where was it? Yeah, we, um, we drove around down for a couple of days trying to find a spot and we ended up fishing right at the boat ramp. Didn't move from there the whole, um, the whole time, so it was pretty cool. Now, when you say fishing at the boat ramp, you weren't fishing with inside of the boat ramp. You were literally fishing the boat ramp. Karim, how, how do you fish a boat ramp? Um, well, you look at the bait ramp and you throw it up and you just roll it, it'll pop them back down pretty much. So, yeah, it was um, pretty simple fishing. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty successful too. Why does a boat ramp attract fish so well? Like, there's a lake there that's got lots of weed, lots of structure, lots of places a barrack can be. Why do they want to hang around the noisiest part of the joint? I think the lights of the boat trails and that attract them. And um, if they do a restock sometimes, some get let go right there and that's where they're going to feed on them little barra. But I don't know, it's just the weed goes right close to it, the current comes around the corner, there's a bit of a lip on the boat ramp and they seem to, you watch them on the 360, they come around your boat, come up and sit right on the lip of the boat ramp and I've seen I think, a little back eddy there, they seem to like it. Well, they are in a freshwater lake but they do like current still, these fish and they relate to it. Karim, run us through some of the tackle you used to, uh, to get onto some of these things and, and also how many fish did you catch? You seem to be hooked up all night. Yeah, uh, I think we got about 20 for the for the night um but yeah we pretty much threw up um we had three main lures um just a selection of vibes we we're getting a few bites on um piranha vibes from imikatsu um transams as well um so we'd hop them down the ramp and i think they were just chasing a little gudgeon and whatnot they're on the ramp um also um five inch castaic we're hopping down the ramp as well we got a few on that and um we had a late bite about 10 o'clock um and they they must have been feeding a bit higher in the water column and we could they were starting to buff and stuff like that so we got a few on rudra as well so the real rudra and um we had a little flurry there we upgraded about four or five so it was pretty yep. cool we noticed on your score sheets uh it started off you everything's going on the score sheets in the end it looked like you were just catching meteries is that just because you're only writing down the meteries yeah. or you're not you're not busying yourself with the paperwork yeah, like we're getting 80s and that but you can tell we we had to upgrade a 97 so yep. you don't even land them you unhook them so you can get straight back out in there Take us through uh, the Humminbird Edge Rods the team is. We've just heard you saw the fish on the 360 as they were coming in there. Take us through the Edge Rods you used for this event. Yeah, well, I used um, a vibe, like Prana vibe in Gatsu. Show us. Show us. In um, Red Valley Black. That's not a standard barrel lure, is it? Oh, it is if when you use it, yeah. But um, it's just like any other vibe. This has got no noise in that one and the vibe's real good. That's why I got a real hard vibe to it. Uh, I'm throwing on BCR705. Um, it's my vibe rod and I got a bit lazy. I got a Wilson clip on there. I love these clips. And I just, when we heard them buffing out back in 20 foot of water, we put a rudder on. I just clipped it straight on, threw it out there, and we had three upgrades in like 10 minutes. It was pretty cool. So when you say a rudder, that's a shallow jerkbait, Griffo. Yeah. Grab it down from there. And, uh, and how do you fish? How, how do you know to throw a throw the other way from the um from the boat ramp they were literally buffing out the back of your boat yeah just just um yeah you gotta pay attention what's going around you and um yeah we had a few buffs they sort of start buffing and then they stay in similar areas so you just work that area and they just seem to be traveling through or sitting in the same area. it must be a little school of bait there they've got to hold up and smashing so is there any better bait bite in barra fishing than a jerk bait bite oh no because we'll suspend and that's like it sits with a real slow freight and we're giving it you know, count to 10 sometimes and they just just when you go to twitch it that's when they grab it it's the best bite yeah. of everything that you do yeah well that's awesome and you guys caught uh, just under 60 kilos for the event uh, we had a few big fish come in last year some you know meter 37 meter 28s so where you're sitting there worried that someone was going to catch one of those big units and displace yeah. you you're waiting for that all night pretty much uh, you know what that dam can do but um but yeah when it's in a little bit of a funk sometimes you just, they just don't roll up and and yeah you, those early meteries seem to just keep you popped up but um but yeah your whole night you're just waiting to get killed off the board when a big one comes through so yeah and the good thing about kinchin you got the app working so everyone out there can watch what's going on i think that lead changed six seven times all night and we're that close and we had laney in front of us then we passed him we had another little upgrade was pretty close so 
you know, everyone's watching, it's pretty cool. If we can get a tower at, at Faust, it'd be even better here as well. Yeah, I'm sure you North Queensland guys have contacts, would love to come live from Faust. But look, you guys, congratulations. I don't even know how many events you've won. This must be your 10th event or something you've won on the tour and uh, another 1,500 bucks for the bank. Yep, helps us for next year. <laughs> Keep going. Now, I heard this rumour, actually. I heard it uh, after a tough day at the uh, Australian Open at Awonga, you said this might be your last tour. We were going to get you a cake to say, <laughs> to say see you later. It, it's changed now, has it? No. Nah. <laughs> nah, it'll be probably our last tour, actually doing the tour. We made that decision in the last year. Yeah. Um, we'll probably cherry pick a few events here and there, but yep. just got to start. Um, I've got a few family changes coming up. and um, yep. yeah. <laughs> So we just got to start uh, prioritising a bit of you know, home you life and that sort of stuff as well. So. Well, that's all right. It's, it's good to have you on the tour, but there are a few guys out there that come second all the time probably like to see you go. No, well, I think it's obvious that they like to... That's why they do it. A lot of people do it. They want to beat, you know, everyone. I like to beat the best out there, so... And that's why we do comps. That's yeah. the best thing about it. Happy days. So, yeah, we, there's that many comps now. It's too many holidays you've got to take, and we can't keep up, so that's one of the main reasons as well. There you go. Well, there you go. With another win in the books there for uh, the winningest team we've ever had on ABT Barra, Team Humminbird Edge Rods. Thank you. Give us a righto. Righto.